to the 5-Minute Medicine series on abnormal liver enzymes. The most common liver enzymes that are assessed are the serum amino transferases AST and ALT, alkaline phosphatase, and GGT. The term liver function test is commonly used to refer to these, but this actually refers to tests that measure how well the liver is functioning, such as synthesis of albumin and coagulation factors, or conjugation of bilirubin. It is an imprecise term since many of the tests reflecting the health of the liver are not direct measures of its function. For instance, the INR can be elevated for reasons other than liver malfunction. The differential diagnosis of elevated liver enzymes is vast. It is helpful to know if the rise is acute versus chronic for the purposes of determining a differential. However, very often you will get a patient with elevated enzymes and you don't know whether the rise is acute or chronic, so we will consider both. To help remember the differential, you can look at the mnemonic here where each term of the differential begins with the letter of the alphabet in sequence, for instance, A for autoimmune, B for biliary complications, etc. Autoimmune disease is a diagnosis based upon the presence of elevated serum aminotransferases, absence of other causes of chronic hepatitis, and serologic or pathologic features suggestive of autoimmune hepatitis. Biliary complications include anything which obstructs the flow of bile acids through the bile ducts. Examples include stones within the ducts, compression outside the duct like pancreatic or gallbladder carcinoma, or inflammation of the ducts as seen in primary biliary cirrhosis or primary sclerosing cholangitis. Hepatic congestion can be caused by congestive heart failure or Bud Chiari syndrome, where there is something obstructing blood flow through the hepatic veins. Almost any drug can cause an elevation of liver enzymes. Common causes include acetaminophen, NSAIDs, antibiotics, statins, anti-epileptic drugs, and anti-tuberculosis drugs. In addition, herbal preparations and illicit drug use may also be the cause. Ethanol is a common reason for liver injury, both acute and chronic. The diagnosis is supported by an AST to ALT ratio of 2 to 1 or greater, with an elevated GGT. Fatty liver and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH, may present solely with mild elevations of the serum aminotransferases, which are usually less than fourfold elevated. NASH is associated with obesity and type 2 diabetes. Growth refers to lesions of the liver. Malignancies of the liver, whether primary or secondary, as well as infections, can cause hepatocellular damage. Hereditary causes include hemochromatosis, Wilson's, and alpha-1 antitrypsin disorder. Hemochromatosis is a common genetic disorder with a frequency of 1 in 200 for homozygous state in Caucasians. Think of Wilson's disease in a young to middle-aged patient who has neurologic symptoms. Patients with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency may have lung involvement. Ischemic damage to the liver may be seen in patients who have a prolonged period of systemic hypotension, such as following a cardiac arrest. Striking increases in serum aminotransferases exceeding 1,000 international units per liter and lactate may be seen. The hepatitis viruses are a common cause of liver injury. Everyone who presents with abnormal liver enzymes should be assessed for viral hepatitis, since we can easily diagnose it and treatment is available. A complete medical history is the single most important part of the evaluation of the patient with elevated liver enzymes. Assess for the presence of any symptoms, including jaundice, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, pale colored stools, dark urine, anorexia, or a rash which may be related to viral hepatitis. The patient may be aware of previous abnormal liver tests, so ask the patient about the duration of this abnormality. The patient should also be carefully questioned about risk factors for viral hepatitis, including IV and intranasal drug use, transfusions, tattoos, and sexual activity. Other important questions include recent travel history, exposure to people with jaundice, exposure to possibly contaminated foods, and alcohol consumption. Assess for the use of or exposure to any chemical or medication, including prescription and over-the-counter medications, as well as herbal therapies, which may be temporarily related to the onset of liver enzyme abnormalities. The presence of other medical conditions may increase suspicions for certain diagnoses. CHF raises concern for hepatic congestion. Hypercoagulable disorder may suggest a portal vein or hepatic vein thrombosis. Other autoimmune diseases or celiacs may raise suspicions for autoimmune hepatitis. Diabetes and dyslipidemia are commonly seen in patients with fatty liver. Ask about a family history of liver conditions as well. Finally, you want to know if the patient has had any symptoms suggesting they may have cirrhosis. Ask about accumulation of fluid in the ab abdomen or legs, symptoms suggesting upper GI bleeding, and if they've had any episodes of confusion, disorientation, or disturbance in their sleep-wake cycle. The physical examination should focus upon findings suggesting the presence of liver disease. Specific findings may provide clues toward diagnosis of the underlying cause as well. 
is the patient jaundice, assessed for a stigmata of chronic liver disease, which suggests the process may be long-standing. Jugular venous distension, a sign of right-sided heart failure, suggests hepatic congestion may be the cause. A patient who has come in confused and has asterixis may be suffering from hepatic encephalopathy. The abdominal exam should focus upon the size and consistency of the liver. Castell sign can help assess for an enlarged spleen. Assess for ascites by determining whether there is a fluid wave or shifting dullness. Severe right upper quadrant tenderness with respiratory arrest on inspiration is Murphy's sign and suggests cholecystitis or occasionally ascending cholangitis. Patients with a hepatocellular process generally have a disproportionate elevation in the serum aminotransferases compared with the alkaline phosphatase, while those with a cholestatic process have opposite findings. The serum albumin, bilirubin, and INR should be obtained to assess liver function. Other blood work to consider include ANA, anti-smooth muscle antibody, anti-liver kidney microsomal antibody, and quantitative immunoglobulins to assess for autoimmune hepatitis. AMA is elevated in over 95% of patients with primary biliary cirrhosis. A high ethanol level in a patient with acute hepatitis may be helpful. Fasting blood glucose and lipid profile should be done to assess if fatty liver could be contributing. Ferritin, iron, and TIBC may suggest the patient is iron overloaded. Serum seriloplasm screens for Wilson's and alpha-1 antitrypsin levels may be low in the deficiency state. Lactate may be elevated after an ischemic insult. Serology for hepatitis viruses will help screen for the viral causes. Note that in adults, ammonia levels are not helpful as patients with severe encephalopathy may have low, normal, or high levels. An ultrasound is a cost-efficient method to assess the liver and can assess for cirrhosis. Numerous conditions can be detected, including biliary duct abnormalities and cholelithiasis, fatty liver, growth of the liver, and if Doppler flows are used, it can also detect hepatic congestion, such as due to CHF, Bud Curie, or even portal vein thrombosis. In summary, the history is the most important part of the approach to elevated liver enzymes. The ABCDEFGHI approach is one mnemonic that can help you remember most causes of liver enzyme abnormalities. The physical exam and liver function tests such as albumin, INR, and bilirubin may determine the presence of fulminant or chronic liver failure, but rarely help with the etiology of elevated liver enzymes. Ultrasound imaging is helpful to diagnose many of the causes, especially obstructive causes and those related to flow through the liver.